Hello, I'm Dr. Allison Smith, Clinical Team Manager here at Dutch, and today I'm going to talk us through the new version of the Dutch Complete Report. I will take you through each of the new report enhancements. These are small but significant changes that will help you interpret the Dutch test more quickly and make it easier to explain these findings to your patients. We'll then review how the male and female Dutch reports differ, and after that we'll walk through the Dutch Complete Report so that you can get a feel for how it functions. First, let's go over the new features on the Dutch report. So here's a list of all six of the new enhancements that you'll find. First, the colors on the dial noses got an update. The age-dependent ranges are embedded now into the androgen dials for ease of interp. We've added a dial for testosterone's metabolite, 5-alpha androstane dial, and we also include it now in the female hormones flowchart on page three. You'll also find a cortisol clearance slider on the report now, which gives you a visual representation of the rate of cortisol metabolism. And then the comments at the end of the report are now much more succinct. Let's start with those dial noses. They now will have the color of the range that the patient falls into. So if they're falling into the luteal range, the dial nose will be green, just like the range color. If they're falling into the postmenopausal range, the dial nose will be purple, just like its range. If hormone levels are outside of range, high or low, the dial nose is now red. No more yellow for low. Age-dependent ranges now are embedded into the androgen dials. For males, like the dial on the left, the over 40 population you'll see is in dark green. The under 40s are in light green. And for females, because female androgens are also produced from ovaries as well as the adrenals, the postmenopausal range is based on females over 55, they're in purple. And the premenopausal range, which is based on cycling females 18 to 40, is there in green. On the summary page, you'll see 5-alpha androstane dial has been added. Just gives you a better idea of tissue androgen exposure right off the bat. And you'll also find the cortisol clearance rate population slider, and that gives you a sense of how fast or how slowly cortisol is being cleared from the body. 5-alpha androstane dial, not a new marker on the Dutch test, but in the past it was easy to miss on the report. But now, 5-alpha androstane dial is taking its place on the summary page like we just showed, and it's also a featured marker here on page three in the flow chart on both the male and female reports, and that's a marker of androgen exposure at the tissue level. So we really wanted to tease that out front and center because it is more sensitive marker of androgen effects, uh, especially in females. You can read more about 5-alpha androstane dial if this feels a little bit new to you. We did publish this white paper that synthesizes the evidence. It has a nice executive summary if you don't have time to read it all, but it's a good read and I recommend it. We've also added a cortisol clearance rate, which is a calculated ratio of cortisol and cortisone metabolites compared to the free cortisol and free cortisone. And this is a new ratio, but we've been testing these analytes that go into it for years. And many providers are used to visually approximating cortisol clearance by comparing total free cortisol and the total metabolites of cortisol, those dials. Now we don't have to do that anymore. It's right there on the report in a population slider. Now cortisol clearance rate describes the body's rate of cortisol breakdown and removal by 5-alpha and 5-beta reductases. And abnormalities in cortisol clearance rate are characteristic in conditions like insulin resistance, inflammation, obesity, hyper and hypothyroid, all kinds of things that affect adrenal function. So when the cortisol clearance rate is low, consider hypothyroidism, anorexia, and cholestasis as possible drivers. But when fast cortisol clearance rate is found, it's more driven by obesity, insulin resistance, inflammation, hyperthyroid, a lot of other considerations, fatty liver even. If you see a slider on the test report that's not reportable, that means that one of the calculation inputs is missing, like in the case of a missing sample like you see here, or sometimes the inputs might be lower than detectable limits, and that can also trigger a non-reportable slider, and that's intentional when you see that. Previous versions of the report had 12 or 13 pages of comments, you might recall, that followed the results. Now the comments are much more streamlined, patient-specific. They speak mainly to abnormal findings and to patterns of imbalance that you don't want to miss. So those are the changes you'll encounter on the newest version of your Dutch report. Now let's get you really familiar with the new look on the Dutch Complete. And this is our combination panel from four or five dried urine samples collected over the course of a single day. 
The Dutch Complete for both females and males is made up of a summary page plus three component panels, the sex hormone panel, the adrenal panel, and the organic acids panel, or the OATS. This means when you're assessing a person's hormone-related symptoms, the Dutch Complete gives you a more comprehensive look at stress's impact on cortisol and DHEA, sex hormone metabolism's impact on hormone symptoms, and a deeper understanding of etiological issues like dysbiosis or oxidative stress, nutritional deficiencies that can sometimes be lurking at the core. So how do male and female reports differ? Actually, all the analytes tested on male and female reports are exactly the same, and they are all reported in the results lists on the Dutch Complete and the Dutch Plus. However, there are a couple of small visual differences in how the results are displayed on the picture pages. So the summary page of the male and female reports looks slightly different, like so. The male report on the left here emphasizes the balance between testosterone and estradiol, whereas the female report on the right visually compares the progesterone to estradiol. On the male report, DHT is featured on page three flowchart here, but on the female report, progesterone metabolism is featured instead. So just these little small details. So now it's time to walk through a female Dutch complete. Let's start with the hormone summary page. On the summary page in the upper right corner, we can see this test is for a 46-year-old female. They've collected their samples on cycle day 20, and we know that because the last menstrual period was May 25th, and the samples were collected on June 13th. Cycle day 20 should be a mid-luteal sample day if this patient has roughly 28-day cycles. So this is probably collected in the right time frame. Estradiol is within the normal luteal range, represented by the green arc in the dial. And then remember, the postmenopausal range is in purple there. So the estradiol is normal, but the progesterone is very low, in the postmenopausal range even. And we can see the purple dial nose. This suggests that the patient has not ovulated or ovulated yet, or perhaps this is a luteal insufficient cycle where progesterone is dropped prematurely. The progesterone reported on page one is actually a serum equivalent, which is calculated from urinary alpha and beta pregnane dials that we report on page two and page three, and I'll show you that when we get there. Next, we find testosterone within the normal green range for a cycling female, but 5-alpha androstane diol is elevated, making this a more androgenic lab presentation. So we might ask the patient about things like hirsutism, irritability, acne, scalp hair loss, uh, because that 5-alpha androstane diol is so high. Now, DHEA production is within the green cycling female age range, which is appropriate. Total DHEA production is a calculated sum of DHEA sulfate plus its tissue-formed metabolites, androsterone and etiocholanolone. Next, the free cortisol graph shows us a flattened overall low cortisol output, but the metabolized cortisol total is actually really quite high. And this means total cortisol production is elevated despite lower free cortisol fraction. And this relative difference between free cortisol and metabolized cortisol is described by the cortisol clearance rate slider, which is new on the report. And in this case, it shows a very high cortisol clearance rate within the 98th percentile. So a lot of great information right there on the summary page. Let's dive into the next section, the sex hormone panel. Page two is the list of findings there on the left, and page three displays those findings visually, and that's where we're gonna focus next. In the upper right corner, we find the progesterone metabolites are both lower than luteal and even falling into the postmenopausal ranges. These progesterone metabolites are the ones that are used to calculate the progesterone serum equivalent shown on page one, and it's the alpha pregnane dial here that informs us about progesterone's potential neurosteroid activity at GABA receptors. When it's low in particular, it may be inadequate. Now, parent estrogens in this case are sitting at the tops of their ranges compared to the progesterone. The estrogens are quite dominant. So let's look at phase one metabolism. We use the population sliders to assess phase one estrogen metabolism. Here, we see both a low 216 ratio and a low 2 to 4 ratio, a higher risk metabolic profile. The methylation activity population slider informs us about phase two COMT activity. A slow COMT is seen here. We're comparing 2-methoxy-E1 to 2-hydroxy-E1 for that calculation. And all of the calculated ratios and their ranges used to generate the population sliders on page three can be found on page two in the list of findings. 
Recall that DHEA production from page one was totally normal at 1686, but notice here on page three, we tease out all of those metabolites that go into that calculation. We can compare them. Here we see that DHEA sulfate is relatively low compared to its downstream tissue metabolites. And this is a common finding with inflammation and insulin resistance. Next, check the 5-alpha reductase activity slider, which compares androsterone to etiocholanolone. And we can see immediately that it's normal, but it's shifted more towards 5-alpha dominance. And this could underpin an androgenic presentation like acne or hirsutism. Testosterone is within range for a cycling female, but we're glad we did a Dutch test because we see the 5-alpha androstane diol is actually high, and this confirms 5-alpha reductase activity is part of the underlying driver for this patient. Now, let's move into the adrenal panel next. Pages 4 and 5 of a Dutch Complete are dedicated to cortisol, cortisone, DHEA, and melatonin. Page four is the results list, kind of like page two for the sex hormone panel. And then page five is the visual representation of that data. So here we see free cortisol and free cortisone, diurnal patterns, which are similarly bottom of their ranges are overall low, but we're glad we tested the cortisol metabolites because even though free cortisol is low, this patient doesn't have low cortisol production at all. The elevated cortisol metabolites generated over the course of the whole day show high cortisol production and very high cortisol clearance. Drivers of this pattern, inflammation, insulin resistance, hyperthyroid, so we're already thinking in that direction. The systemic population slider represents the relative balance between cortisol metabolites and cortisone metabolites formed in the liver and adipose tissues. It's normal in this case, but a shift to cortisol or THF, moving that slider to the right, that might tell you about acute stressors being on board, that short burst cortisol activation. But if somebody has a shift more towards the cortisone or THE metabolites, that represents chronic stress and the body's adaptation to longer term high cortisol exposure. The melatonin level comes from the waking sample. All of the waking samples contain hormones that were produced, circulated, and excreted during the night while the patient was asleep. And for melatonin, that should be the highest time of the day. This patient has a low overnight melatonin production. And finally, the organic acids bring up the tail end of the report with some juicy details about common contributors to hormonal imbalances and adrenal stress. These all come from the waking sample. They tell us about key nutritional and cofactor deficiencies, dysbiosis and maldigestion with the endocrine marker, sympathetic nervous system activation and neurotransmitter clearance with the HVA and VMA there, also oxidative stress and inflammation markers, we have quite a few of those, and we saw the melatonin in context with the diurnal cortisol on the adrenal page five, but you also have it here on page six. And if we're assessing the oats for this patient, we see signs of gut issues and related deficiencies probably, as well as significant oxidative stress picture that's probably pulling tryptophan metabolism away from serotonin and melatonin production and more down that kynurenin pathway. And that's the Dutch Complete Report, top to bottom. We have some stellar provider resources that I hope you all take full advantage of. The Dutch Interpretive Guide is a really great one, an incredible resource that walks you through collection and interpretation for Dutch reports on cycling females, postmenopausal females, as well as males. There is valuable information in there on common patterns and even some treatment pearls. You can register for our courses. Our perimenopause course is all about the hormone changes, trajectories, hormone and non-hormone approaches to treatment, and also the patient management side, so you can become the expert for this underserved patient population. And then as a provider, you have access to all of our clinical resources, courses, and consults, and we hope that you use them. Thank you for learning about our new report enhancements and the Dutch Complete. I hope you feel ready to use this with your next patient.